Bastei, Lugensland, Eber, Stier. A long time ago, the Fjordager lived together in harmony. But then, everything changed when Lagerdorf attacked. Hello there, Oscar from Virtual Vectual here. In today's video, I'll be talking about two Hauptstücke, the Vierleger and the Versetzen that will follow from it. I think this particular Hauptstück is going to be a really interesting one because this is really the first time when we start to see that Lechner's messer fencing starts to deviate uh, significantly from Lichtenau's longsword. And that's going to have a lot to do with his very extensive use of Langenort. Now, I've decided to make a video of these two Hauptstücke together because they are very closely related and breaking them apart would really not serve the explanations very well. So what I'll be doing is, as per usual, I'll first talk about why these Hauptstücke exist, what is their purpose, I'll show the plays that are contained in them roughly, and then finally give some practical tips, but I'll be doing that for each of these Hauptstücke separately. Now, my explanation of Versetzen will rest very much on what I'll be talking about with the Vierleger, so that's why I decided to make one single video on these two Hauptstücke. Let's get going though. We're going to get started on the Vierleger, and I guess the first question is why are there only four? Why not five? Why not three? Well, as Leipzig says it himself, these Vierleger are basically meant to hold yourself in, so to stand in and to fence from. So they can be both a static position or something that you go through while fencing. These are not the only stances we find in the manuscript though. There's of course a uh, quite well known Schrankut, or this unnamed position that you have to take if you're about to strike a Zwinger or an Entrusthau. And of course there's also just putting the Messer on your shoulder, which we see in the Winker and the Wecker. So there's a lot of other positions or guards, but the Vierleger are the basic ones and the most important ones and the ones we should be fencing from most often if we stick to the manuscript. So that kind of leaves the question why these four not why not the other ones and although we can't really be sure it's not written explicitly in the manuscript but this is why I think. From all of these four particular lager, these four stances, we can quite easily both go to a hanging which means that we can do windings from them and we can quite easily get to long points or long enough from these, giving them uh, a very central position in the system of fencing. So let's just get a quick overview of what's there. We start off with the Bastai or the Bastion, and the idea is that you have a somewhat low stance, your majority of your weight is on your front foot, and you keep the knife with the point down towards the ground in the middle. We then go to Lugensland, another fortification name, which is a watchtower, the highest tower in the city of Nuremberg. And the Lugensland, you take a rather more high stance and you aim the knife up towards the sky at roughly a 45 degree angle. Moving on, we come to two animals. First one is the Eber, or the boar. And you do the boar by taking a rather low stance, uh, keeping the point of your knife forward and keeping your hands low. The Stier, or the bull on the other hand, has the hands high with the point forward and you have also somewhat more high stance. Now, when assuming these guards, there's a couple of things that, to keep in mind. Um, there's been, you can have a lot of discussion about what's the right way to do uh, any of these few Lager. Um, you can try to copy the manuscript images, but there's nothing wrong with changing it up a bit or fitting it to uh, make sure you can do them a bit more easily. Um, however, there's, I think, a couple of common characteristics that you need to make sure your Lager have. The first one is to make sure that your hands are safe, and that's very important. The idea with these Lager is that you keep your hands in a position where they're not an easy target. Uh, for obvious reasons, you don't want to get hit in those hands, but also you do not want the hands to be an easy target that someone can strike to while they're on the way to something else. As you can see in this example, Jasper has his hands out quite in front and quite open, so I can quite easily make a strike towards his hand, and he doesn't really have that much of a hard time of turning his knife so that he can catch it on the cross or the knuckle. But in doing that, I can very easily just change through and go into a long point, into a art. So in this case, the hand is an easy target, it's a target of opportunity, I can 
strike towards the hand while also presenting my point towards the ultimate body. Therefore, it is a position that's really not that great for him. Moving the hand back will mitigate this problem quite significantly. You see this in the other Lager as well, if you keep the hand all the way up, as in with Stier or Lugensland, or all the way down close to your legs, as in with Pastai, you will probably not um, see that your opponent is going to take these attacks of opportunity towards your hands. I think a second common characteristic that you need to keep in mind is that if your hands are somewhere up high, then you're also going to have a somewhat high stance. And conversely, if you, or your hands are low, you're going to have a somewhat low stance. Now the reasons for this are once again not explicit, but something that I found is that a lot of the bind work in Messer tends to travel upwards. It has quite a lot to do with the fact that you have only one hand and pressure applied tends to drive up if two people apply pressure at the same time. And you want to very much um, create good leverage by doing overbinding, so getting your strong when they're weak. As a result, um, you either want to be driving up or coming down. And therefore, if your hands are high, you want to come uh, down from as high as possible, so a somewhat higher stance. And if you come from low, you want to drive up as much as you can, and therefore you can have a lower stance if your hands are low. A final thing that you need to keep in mind, of course, is that whatever variation of a Lego you're going to do, it needs to be easy for you to go to a hanging and to a Lagenort. This flexibility is something you really need from your Lego. Now let's move on to the Versetzen. Um, they are very much there to help you deal with one of these Lagers. They are there to help you attack one of these Lagers. And the Versetzen, as we know them in Longsword, are very much dependent on you picking the right for Borgenhaut, the right uh, Meisterhaut, if you will, to attack their corresponding Lager. So in Longsword it would be that the Tverhau counters the Fontag, the Krumphau counters the Ox, then you have the Schiller that counters the Flug, and finally the Scheiter that counters the Albert. Now this system exists in Messer as well, but quite interestingly uh, in the second version of the manuscript that we know, the 1482 version, Lekwisner says that this is not the ideal way to do a Versetzen. So what we see in uh, his later work is that Lekwisner says, yes, technically you can use the cuts to counter a Lager. So we have a Becker against a Stier, we have an Entrusthau against the Lugensland, we have a Zwinger against Eber, and a Gefeerhau against Pasta. However, he's also quite clearly stating that this is not ideal. So what he says is long point beats all of these. So the cuts are countered by long point and therefore long point is a better way of doing the presets of attacking the later. And he shows this in several ways. First off, he shows how to use a long point against um, an opponent who is in either Eber or a Stier and tries to thrust from there. And secondly, he does something that we know in Longsword as Ansetzen, and is also described as Ansetzen in the manuscript, and that is if someone prepares to strike a cut, either from above or from below, then you just thrust at them with long point. Now, let's get to the first one. So, how do you do these things? How do you make this work for you in fencing? Well, when it comes to using a Verborgenhau against a guard, I'll pretty much just refer to earlier videos I did on this subject, as Lekuna does. He says, well, if you want to know how you can perform these cuts against the Lagers, then just look back uh, at the chapters we've done before, the lessons we've previously done, as you well know how to do it. So I will try to focus more on how to use long point effectively. Now this first bit of the Versetzen is where we use a long point against someone who thrusts at us from Eber and Stier. Now these are quite tricky to pull off because they have to be done in this. So they have to be done at the same moment that someone is making those thrusts at you. Someone thrusts at you from Stier and you simultaneously thrust at them in long point and because long point has better reach theoretically than Eber or Stier in thrust, you win that exchange. Um, the idea being, I suppose, that if someone sees a sharp point coming towards their face, they're not going to be hanging around and trying to actually land their point, they're going to be retreating or parrying or what will they? Now, a good piece of advice 
uh, to do this well to make sure that you have more reach with your long point than the, your opponent with their Eber or Stier thrust is to put your rear foot back a bit. It's almost like a backward lunge. If you want to know how to do that, just have a look at one of these videos on footwork that I made. The backward lunge will give you a little bit more reach, but still I find that this one is really difficult to pull off in a more modern context. And that's quite a lot to do with the fact that a lot of people commit to their thrusts a lot more. Um, and even if they don't, and you do manage to get your long point in, which is longer than any sort of thrust from an Eber or Stier, you will still notice that people are less intimidated by these thrusts because we're wearing masks, we're wearing gorgets, we're wearing jackets, and therefore people do not fear the point as much as perhaps they should. Therefore, this technique is not a very high percentage one if you want to try and pull it off in modern sparring. Um, I would not recommend it in a modern context, but it is there, and... Uh, if you understand the context for it, it's a reasonably sensible play to do. Just know that if you try it in modern sparring, it will probably not be very successful. The one that I do like a lot, and that works wonders in modern sparring, is what is described as ansitz. The idea here is that very much you're going to be thrusting your long point, your Langenort, into a preparation for an attack. So your opponent loads up to strike an Obenhau, and you're supposed to come vor. So rather than working in this, as with the um, the long point against Eber and Stier, we come for so before the opponent makes their attack. And by doing that, we can thrust them before they make a threat to us and then immediately wind back into a hanging to counter their, for their strike, should they decide to go through with it. Now this works both against cuts from above Obenhauer and against cuts from below Obenhauer. The Obenhauer here is struck with the short edge, uh, as we see quite a lot across the entire leg of the manuscript. Um, but in theory, I think it should work as well if someone um, loads up for a cut with a long edge. The important thing here is that you thrust before they start their attack, and then while they make their attack, you can once again get back into a safe position, a hanging, or just get the hell out of there. Now, this is not explicitly described like this, but you can also use this if someone does not necessarily prepare an attack, but just approaches you in a guard and refuses to do something. So if there is a bit of a standoff, you can very much just present long point and see what they do. So if someone approaches you in Lumisland, just do Ansetzen, attack them with Laminort and see what happens. If you land the hit, very nice. If they have to parry that, then you can work with that too. And it does not only work against uh, Lungisland or against Bastai if someone is low, but it also works against when your opponent is in Eber or in Stier. You also get a very nice opportunity to just present a Langenort and see what they do against that. So, what I found here is that even though it's not necessarily described as such in the manuscript, and it might not even have been something that they did back in the day because of footwear, uh, lunges do really work well if you're trying an ansets. Uh And why not? We've got the modern footwork, we've got the safety gear to make sure that we don't spit our opponents on our knives. So we can make the lunges and they work really well. Um, I enjoy that a lot and I think that it works quite well with this particular play with the ansets. Now, this is pretty much um, the end of my explanation. It was a long video, but I do think it's a really important topic. This really sets Lekuzner's measure fencing apart from other stuff out there. The extensive use of the Langenort with a primarily custom oriented weapon, which is really cool. Now, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you enjoy using Langenort or whether you hate it. Leave a comment um, below. And finally, I'd like to extend my thanks again to my patrons. Your support is really helping me make more videos like this, so thanks a lot again. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Until then.